All right. Welcome back to the Noteworthy USA podcast. As always, I'm your host, Ben Fredericks. Uh, today, I have a great guest uh, who is going to be undertaking a uh, version of one of my favorite books, and we'll connect with him here shortly. But prior to the start of the show, I want to remind you that we have the Noteworthy, Noteworthy USA virtual convention coming up uh, September 17th through the 18th. It's 25 bucks. It's going to be super packed with value over two days with some top note investors from around the country, basically walking you through A to Z what you need to do to succeed in 2021 and beyond with all of the crazy opportunities that are going to be coming down, uh, you know, just thanks to COVID and, and where we are in our economy. So uh, you can get your tickets at attendnoteworthy.com. All right. Now that the plugs are done, uh, obviously, uh, one more housekeeping note. Uh, if you like the show, please share it. Hit the subscribe button, and uh, we, we greatly value that. You can also uh, connect with us on Facebook. We have a couple of different groups going on. We have a Noteworthy USA Note Investors group, which is totally free, and it's just a way, great way for you to network with other note investors, maybe pick up some notes or sell your own notes uh, in that space. So go ahead and check that out. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest today, uh, from SimpleCFOSolutions.com, Mr. David Richter. How's it going, David? It's going really good. I'm excited to be on here. Yeah, glad to have you on the show. Um, you know, I'm, you're now doing our show and I've done your show and yep. uh, it's a great reciprocation, but I'm, I'm glad to have you on because we're going to talk about some interesting things. And, um, you know, for I opened the show saying that you are working on a project, uh, you know, sort of a, a side project ancillary book from one of my favorite books, Profit First. And yep. I'm really excited to see where you take that. Yeah, I'm really excited too. Yeah, we partnered with Mike Michalowicz for writing Profit First for real estate investors. So I'm really excited about that opportunity. I've started writing the book. It's been, it's a, a journey for sure. And I'm really excited about this journey. So yeah, that's one of the big things on my plate right now. Yeah. I think Profit First is like one of those books that is like, it should be taught in school, you know? Oh like, yeah. It's a, it's a legitimate like foundational book. And if you, if you're listening to the show and you've not read it, I'll put a link in the show notes for you to go buy it. Um, it I, I, I only wish I had read it, you know, prior to going into business just to understand more of about how to uh, basically align my money inside of the business. And uh, right. thank God we found it when we did. I told you this on your show that, you know, it was a godsend because if we hadn't, we, we might've been in big trouble once COVID hit because we just weren't, we were kind of hand to mouth like most Americans are. And right. I think real estate investors specifically fall into that mm -hmm. category. So I think your book is going to be really helpful. Can you talk about, I know you're, you're sort of still in the early development part of it, but can you talk about um, sort of the things that you think are going to be in the book? If you can share any of that, maybe oh, yeah, behind sure. the curtain. Yeah, for sure. Cause I want to definitely share as much as I can before it's out because I don't want this information all in my head or all in, you know, like <laughs> the people that were implementing it. This is, I want to share as much as, as humanly possible before then. I don't care if you know the whole book before it comes out. So the real estate investing is definitely cyclical, you know, like you sell, you can sell, be selling deals or you have rentals, you know, people who pay, don't pay. So the whole profit first philosophy is you kind of even that all out, no matter what kind of business you have, you set a system with your finances. And that's why it appeals so much to me. Cause like even Robert Kiyosaki in his books, you know, rich dad, poor dad, cash flow quadrant, all those great ones. It's like, you should be paying yourself first. You should be profitable. But like, what's the system behind that? Like, how do I actually do that? Cause even in, if you've played cash flow 101, you know, in the cash flow game that he has, then you probably, you know, that helped you learn a lot. It'll help you learn a lot about, you know, like what the, the basics of stocks, the real basics, real basic there. And then the basics of real estate investing too. And so I was like, okay, what about, so if you use that game or you use something like that to teach that, uh, would, there needs to be like, how do you actually keep that money then? Okay. You have that all coming in and that sounds great, but like, what's the system behind actually keeping the money as it comes in? Because that's where you were saying so many real estate investors live, you know, check to check, deal to deal that 
they need something, they need a system for that back end where everyone has a system for marketing, everyone has a system for their sales and their operations, or they're always trying to build that and that's what everything is always preached, but you never ever hear anyone say you need a system for your finances or you yeah. need something like that. And that's what I feel like this is. And that's why I wanted to bring it to the real estate community. So let me get to some of the key points about it. And should I assume that everyone on here knows the basics of Profit First or should I go into like some of the core of Profit First too? I would make, I would make the assumption that they don't because okay. and, and quite frankly, I mean, awesome. these podcasts live on in eternity. So you never right. know where somebody's going to find it. In their, you in their never spot. know. No, that's a great, great point. So Profit First is the system for finances, meaning you physically set up bank accounts. You set up different bank accounts for a pro, like a profit account, a tax account, an owner's pay and operating expenses. And then there's an income account that kind of holds your money. But then every time you make a sale, like you have a, you know, a flip or wholesale or something, you're allocating from that sale, the profit from that sale from certain percentages into those accounts. So that's the core of profit first, like the actual functionality. The higher level is that you are that investor that lives deal to deal. Everyone, you know, 95% of investors are like that, that don't have that system for their finances. So what this does is says, you need to be a profitable real estate company. How do you do that? You actually take your profit first, meaning like the traditional, the traditional formula is sales minus expenses and whatever's left over is equals your profit. That's what you get to take. Yeah. Profit first, the whole philosophy flips it on its head and says, no, it's sales minus profit equals expenses. So you say, well, that sounds like the same formula, but it's vastly different in the mindset because you have to say, okay, I'm going to take money out of my business first to actually have, hold as profit. And then anything that's left over from that, I'll be able to pay bills and make sure my, my company runs off of that. And you say, what in the world? I, there's no way I can make that happen. And you're probably right if you have that mentality, because what you need to think is, well, no, I need to actually make sure I'm paying myself, that the company is actually a profitable company. And then I need to be living off of the actual expenses, you know, like the expenses need to be lived off of what's left over. And that in a real estate company, you might say, well, what in the world? I, how can I do that? And honestly, I've seen it work now in real estate companies where there it's a flipper or it's a rental company because of how we set that up, because you have a sale come in and then let's just say it's a $25,000 sale. That $25,000 gets allocated over a profit account. And that might, when you first start out, you need to be realistic. That it might only be a couple percentage points or maybe 1%. So it's like, start where you can, but then there's different levels. As far as like what your business is, there's certain percentages that you should be trying to hit, but that doesn't mean start at those percentages right away. And if, if you read the book, it goes into greater detail. And when our book comes out, then we'll make sure that we have those in there too, like the per percentages for real estate companies. But that's where you have that money that comes in and you're allocating it. So now you have money now saved for your profit in a profit account for an owner's pay, like a percentage should go to you. There's so, oh man, that's been one of the life changing things working with people has been like, there's been some flippers where they had rentals too, and they've just been taking it on the rental side, their, their pay, but they haven't been paying themselves from the flip side. Cause they were just like, Oh, I got to grind it out and make sure, you know, blah, blah, blah. Thinking that they had to be this big, bad company. Well, they've scaled back to what they could actually do. And now they're paying themselves and now they love flipping where they used to hate flipping. So it's like, it just changes your whole mentality. But that, I, I digress. That was a tangent off the owner's pay. So then you're paying yourself, you're putting some into owner's pay. How about a tax account? Especially if you're in the trading business, like if you're flipping or wholesaling, assigning, wholetailing, anything that's like you have to do over and over again like that to make money. That way those, you need to have an account set aside for your taxes because you're going to pay taxes at the end of the year if that's all you're doing. If you have rentals, then you're then you know you're on your way to paying less and less taxes, but that's another whole nother story. But for if you're a flipper, it's definitely something that you need. You need a separate account for your taxes to be saving. And then the last one is the operating expenses. And that operating expenses, that's what you get to pay the whole operation from, from that account. And that's a certain percentage too. So those are the foundational accounts in Profit First. But then for real estate investors, another account that I love setting up at the beginning is an OPM account other people's money account because that's like a rehab or repair. Some people call that. I just like the flashier name of OPM. So we have the OPM account, which really is when you get private money 
from someone else or like you have when you have a specific you know like dollar amount that's coming from an outside investor to your company that is not your money you are spending it in order to make a property better but you that is not your money it is only your money when you sell that property and have paid back the lender and if you went under budget and there's extra money in that account then you could take it then but so many investors don't even have that separate account for their for their you know lenders finances and they just put it into one big pot and it all sits there and if they have a ton of money they think they're doing great if they have a little bit of money they think okay i got to go get another loan or i've got to you know sell this property for less than what it's worth or i've got to make some cash real quick but if you have that separate account it's going to show you that okay are we on budget? Do we have enough from other people to cover the rehabs that we have right now? And then if you don't have enough, you're going to have to start dipping into your own funds. And where it's really the opposite, if you have one just big account, you're not keeping track of it. So now you're dipping into the lender's funds to cover your operations, which if you start doing that, then you know that's a red light, you know, that you have to dig into their funds in order to cover your operations. So, unless the loan is specifically for that, like it's a bridge loan or it's a, you know, like you know that you need something in the interim, like a lot of people got the SBA loan, you know, like in, during the, during the uh, COVID here or whatnot. But if it's like covering that, I understand sometimes you might have to bridge the gap, but like if you took money specifically for a property, you shouldn't be using that for your operating expenses and for like running the business. And a lot of people do that. And I get it, like it's hard at the beginning if, you, if you've never done that before, but it's really simple to set up that other account to see, okay, I'm gonna be taking care of this lender's funds more than like almost than I take care of my funds. That's almost the mentality you have to tell the lenders too. That's why I've had several long conversations about Profit First with private lenders that, in, that are in my circle. And they say like, now that I've kind of like, they know the profit first mentality. And after talking with me, they say, if someone says that they're running on profit first, that's like an added bonus for us saying like, okay, they actually care about their finances and care about mine too. So it's like an added bonus there too. So that's why I say set up that extra account for other people's money and make sure you're putting the other people's money in there so you can know, okay, this is where I am at all times with other lenders funds. And if you have multiple lenders, if you have multiple lenders, I might do it per lender instead of per property. So like you could have multiple accounts if you have multiple lenders or I at least have one extra account for other people's money. So that's another big one. Then if you want me to keep going, there's like not just that, but like how you find real revenue because in profit first, it's very, it's very general in profit first, how you find what he calls real revenue and what he defines real revenue as in the book in profit first is like the income minus your materials and subcontractors gives you your real revenue. Well, that can get confusing in, in, to just say that as in, in mass, you know, like for all types of businesses. So in the flipping business, I say your real revenue is your income minus the cost of the sale, you know, like minus what you were all into it, minus the, the actual closing costs, everything there to give you your property profit. Your property profit on the selling side is really like your real revenue. But on the rental side, that one's more fun. The rental side, I've been having talks with Profit First, the people that I'm working with in the rental space. And what we've come up with, and I think is really good, is your real revenue on the rental side as being a landlord, or this would be notes or anything, it would be your income minus your PITI. Like what do you have as far as the debt service or like what are you paying out? And then what's left over could go to profit or owner's pay because you have to pay those off. So if you have a free and clear portfolio, obviously that's going to be a lot higher real revenue number that you have to work with. If you don't, it's just so eye-opening because so many people, even if you are a little bit savvy on the financial side, you think that the P&L is like the end-all be-all and that's how you see the health of your company, which it really isn't. It's especially in a rental company because a lot of your, your money is sitting on the balance sheet side. So like the principal payments you make are on the balance sheet and that's actual cash out the door, not reflected on your profit and loss. So that's been a huge eye opener for landlords seeing, oh, this is actually what I'm spending every month. And this is actually what I have to allocate at the end of the month. Can I really live on that? Do I have the, 
Do I have enough rentals to actually sustain the people that I have working here? Because I have the obligation to always pay, you know, the mortgage, the taxes, the insurance, you know, you always have the interest too. So that's another eye-opening thing that we've seen on like specifically for real estate investors. So there's a couple things behind the scenes. There's some other advanced accounts that I could get into the weeds a little bit more and that I will in the book, but at least for now, that's kind of like the high level I kind of like to hit with real estate investors. Okay. So let's, let's unpack some stuff there. Cause you just went through a lot. So oh, yeah, sure. first and foremost is, is profit first something that somebody should do from day one in business? I love that question. I not only think it's day one, it's like day zero. Like before you even think of being a real estate investor, I think you should know it then. Or if you've done 5,000 deals in your lifetime, I don't care where you are in the real estate world. I think this applies to and like if you can have a head start before or if you've done thousands and thousands of deals, it doesn't matter. You need a system like this for your business. Yeah. This, uh, you know, one of my mentors, he, you know, he always preaches system scale, right? Mm -hmm. So we have yep. systems for everything. And you hit the nail on the head at the beginning there where people do not have a system for finances. So, you know, their, their system might be, well, I've got some, an accountant that handles that. Well, that's not a system. That's a person. No. So this is a particular system that you can implement and use from deal to deal, tracking your profit and what you make. And, and you, this is exactly how we started. I mean, it was a, uh, just as you said, it was a small amount because we we're trying to figure out the numbers. Like, all right, where we really took a, uh, a really thorough look. And this is a good thing. Of, you know, I, I, I digress if I say a good thing about COVID, but one of the shining lights of it, at least, is that a lot of people have begun to evaluate where they stand financially. Yes, I would and agree. This is an opportunity to really learn. I've said that a number of times on this podcast, but really invest in yourself and figure out. So there's a, a, a term that I used when I was in financial services, my company used was stress testing, where these big insurance companies would figure out, all right, if the worst happens here, we go to war or uh, pandemic hits or uh, uh, Great Depression hits. Mm -hmm. What does it do to our underlying portfolio? How do we stand financially? How big of an impact will it make? And I don't think a lot of business owners even take the time to do that. So right. like if you go out of business for three months, what, it, what, what happens if the housing market crashes and you're dependent upon this one particular stream of revenue? What does it do to your business? Right. And with tools like this, you can really start to, you know, dissect all that stuff, mm -hmm. which is great. And the thing I liked most about Profit First was I didn't pay myself a damn thing for the first two years. Like literally, yeah. I, yep. in fact, I poured money into the business. Right. So, um, you know, even though the business was profiting, I, I was still putting more into it to try to grow these other systems. Mm -hmm. And that was a mistake. I should not have done that. And, but you only, you only learn that retrospectively, right? right? So, <laughs> yeah. but I'm looking at it and one of my favorite things is like when you get on an airplane, they go through the whole spiel of, you know, put your mask on first before you mm -hmm. put on your neighbor's mask. Because if you don't have your mask on, you can't help anybody anyways, because you'll be unconscious, right? right? Yep. So, and that's a big part of it. It's like, you know, if you're the king, you eat first. Or if you're the queen of your business, you eat first. You, yep. You're putting your heart and soul into it. You need to be the first person to get something out of it. Because yep. if you're not there, if you can't survive, the business doesn't survive anyways. Exactly. You know, so it's all relative. So uh, one thing I love that you said, and I'm going to implement this right away, is, you know, because uh, we, we use uh, – uh, joint venture partners and, you know, private money on a number of deals is putting that other people's money account. So I think that's brilliant. So that's just one extra thing that we can add to it and, you know, just slowly start shifting that money in there. Awesome. Um, but I'm telling you, once you get into the groove of profit first, like it, you start seeing money stack up and you're mm -hmm. like, it gets exciting, yeah. you know? So you don't feel like the, the hand to mouth thing. And when you're a real estate investor, I know as entrepreneurs, we can thrive off of that. In other words, like the, it's the juice sometimes that pushes yep. you, that, that adrenaline. Maybe yep. it's just me. Maybe I'm a lunatic, but you're like, 
I thrive off of deadlines. I thrive off of getting the, pushing the deal to get done. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Some might call it mental illness, but (laughs) (laughs) it's part of being an entrepreneur. Like it's just part of that deal. But, But I think it's more exciting to get past that because you don't understand what you don't know on the other side of it that profit first offers. Yes. So, um, you do something else to do it. I wanted to touch on, um, which is, you know, you offer a, like a, a CFO solution. Yeah. And I talked about this on your podcast, like, you know, in my business, when we first started, I was CEO, CFO, you know, running the, the entirety of the right. show almost, you know, and yeah. I was work- I'm like the Beatles working eight days a week and it's, that's not sustainable. And, you know, at some point you start to figure that out. So what I did was I, I did an interesting exercise where I went through and just listed out all of the things that I do and then would time how much each one of those things took me to accomplish. And one of the biggest ones was the, you know, being the CFO, it was figuring out the books at the end of the month, which mm-hmm. Once in, in our business, once you begin to add a bunch of notes and, you know, you're flipping some properties and maybe you have some rentals, man, it gets crazy. And I, once I got that off of my plate, it was like the biggest relief ever. Mm. And you talk a little bit about how, you know, that company for you is, is serving people in this space. Sure. So simple CFO was I started that company because there wasn't much out there where there was kind of that in between, between a bookkeeper and CPA in the real estate world to be like, here's the numbers you really need that really are important to you. And like, let's make sure you have those numbers, first of all, because that's like the first thing we do. The first thing we do is go in and be like, okay, we need to get your financials up to date and like help your bookkeeper and like train them on getting this all corrected. So that way you could at least have where you've been, you know, like, where have you been? What have you done? What is your story written in your numbers? So that's like the first thing that we do. And then we implement the profit first system. That's what we do because now that we have your past numbers, I love profit first because we run allocations, meaning like what, like I was saying, when a sale comes in, then we're running allocations. So that's your current finances now having a system. And then we also do quarterly projection meetings. Like what are you planning on this next quarter, what are you, what are your projections for sales or for your rentals or whatnot? So that way we can have kind of a basis of what is it going to happen over this next quarter to kind of plan out those percentages to be like, okay, here's how your future financials should look. And let's reevaluate that at the end of the quarter to see how it actually happened in that last quarter. So that's where I love, I love the profit first system in mass because it's like, okay, where have you been? doing the assessment, looking at that, getting your financials up to date, then running the allocations, your current, and then the projections for your future financials. So that's what we do and what we implement. And then we also help some people with like their KPIs and the marketing. And and as far as not helping them with marketing, but knowing, okay, this is your profit per deal. Tell us how you acquired them. So it's like profit per acquisition. So that way, you know, if you're spending the dollars in the right place too, we're just trying to help people really get the most bane out of their buck, not only for, you know, the financial side, but saying, okay, how does the finances really affect every other area too? So that's in a nutshell, simple CFO is kind of that fractional CFO service. Instead of you having to go out there and pay for a full CFO in a seat, it's us coming in there, helping you with what I just talked about there. And then that's what we do. That's all that we do in simple CFO. We're kind of handholding, making sure that you know what's going on in your business and then make sure you're profitable and actually running on profit first. Yeah, I, 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 I think that's brilliant, man. Like if you can get somebody in there at, you know, uh, a low cost, but to take a lot of things off of your plate, it frees you up to do so much more. You can start to focus yeah. on, you know, systems that increase your sales or, yeah. you know, help you find more sellers or buyers or whatever it is you're doing inside of your real estate business. So, because that's, uh, and that's actually one of, uh, Mike's other books that I just finished reading was fix this next, Oh yeah, uh, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, you don't, I think a lot of businesses, they get caught up in being in business, so to yep. speak, you know, they think that that's exciting. It really is like business is just, it's not, 
it's not the most exciting thing in the world. So, you know, it, but it requires just basic knowledge of finances. It requires mm -hmm. basic knowledge of how you make money as a yeah. business. And once you figure those things out, then I think that's where it starts to get a lot more fun because, oh, yeah. you know, you can focus on growth and, and serving and that's, and that's part of that pyramid of his right in, in that book, which is another great book to pick up, you know, oh, yeah. you know, I'm not Barnes and Noble by any means, but go pick up, you know, fix this next and profit first, like two, two amazing books. Um, but it allows you to not only scale your business up, but to start to have a purpose in your mm -hmm. business, but a, a, a purpose beyond your business where you begin to serve more than, you know, just focusing, you know, a lot of business owners, you, your first couple of years in business are so narcissistic because it's all about you and me and what can I do to grow this business? And you're so focused on yourself. You're not thinking outwardly, at least this is me. So this is like my therapy show guys. So, <laughs> but you know, no, that's, that's sense. what I, that's the way I've always thought of it. It's like, all right. And once you read a book like that, you begin to think like, okay, wow, I can really expand beyond this. If I just get everything running properly and uh, a good buddy of mine, uh, Mark Evans, he, he wrote a book, magician versus a mule. And it's a lot like that. You're uh, most people are a mule in their business. They are pulling it. They're not pulling the strings. They're pulling the business like a workhorse. So, um, so, uh, you know, David, how can, uh, when does your book come out, by the way? When, what's the timeline for that? Next year, 2021. I can't give you an exact date because I'll just tell everyone on here. It's a process. There's, I'm actually going through a 14 week intense course, like with Mike's, like the person that helps Mike write his book. So that's, and that's going to be awesome. I start that next week. I've already started writing it, but that's to like refine it, get the vomit draft out, you know, like that first draft onto out of my head and onto the pages and then so from there then they do a bunch of pre you know pre-orders and get everything set up in place they the profit first team does a lot of their marketing will have a lot of stuff in place and then getting it actually published and pushed out too so i'd say if i had to guess mid to late 2021 that's why we're doing all of this too because like i don't want people waiting until it's actually out because i feel like it might take a little bit to get out but then once it's out it's like okay now everyone can can really take advantage of it and get there. And that's why I love doing these podcasts and like we have our own like for this too. So just want to yeah. get the information out there. That's great, man. I'm super excited for you. I think it's going to be a game changer for a lot of real estate investors. And awesome. as you get closer, uh, when the book launches, we'll have you back on the show and help okay. you promote. Uh, Cause I, I think it's a, a, a noble cause. So, and, and people can really kind of, take their life next level if they implement it and I, great stuff. I, I can't just what you said right there is like the whole goal of this book. Like I want it to change lives. I want the people to know like there's a better way than like killing yourself day in, day out. And honestly, my whole goal around this is to change the way real estate investors think about the financial side of their business. Like I want to change that whole mindset and mentality. So this awesome. is a big step in that direction. Awesome, man. Well, where can people connect with you in the meantime? Sure. SimpleCFOSolutions.com. That's a great place if you want to look at our, our the actual CFO services. But, and I've been forgetting to do this, but they're on podcasts when I'm on too, I have also written another short book. I wrote a short book last year called Less Stress, More Profit. And that one's a real quick read. If you go to, actually, if you email the email address, lessstressmoreprofit at gmail.com, and then just put in the title, you know, the no podcast, you know, like put in, you know, something there. Ben Fredericks is amazing. Just so that way I know where, where you, where you came from. It will send you back not only the ebook, but I did it on audible too. It'll send you the audible recording, the audio version of that book. So that way you can get that book and it's a real short one, but it just gives some good, some real basic guidelines. And it's not as in depth as profit first is going to be, but it's a good primer, I would say. So that would be another give that I want to give here. You know, if you email that's less stress, more profit at gmail.com, it'll send you back because I like systems, send you back an automatic reply with the, with all the, with the ebook and the audio book. Then the other 
The other place now too is, besides Simple CFO and that, is ProfitFirstREI.net. So if you want, or ProfitFirstForRealEstateInvestors.com, I got a shorter one and a longer one for the website. But that's where we're going to be posting the updates as it gets closer to coming out. That's where we're hosting like our podcast episodes too. So if you're wanting to follow that movement, that's, that's where we're going to be hosting it for now. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And quick reminder, if you send out any email, you should be putting Ben Fredericks is awesome in it. There you go. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> so I told you all entrepreneurs are initially narcissists. This <laughs> so, but um, thank you so much for coming on, man. I appreciate it. And yep. uh, I look forward to the book greatly and uh, connect with David Richter. He's a brilliant guy. He comes to our investor fuel mastermind group as well. And uh, if you're serious about your business and taking it to the next level, get involved in Profit First. Talk to him about scaling with a CFO and, and the work that they can do to help you there. Uh, trust me when I tell you, the more work you can get off your shoulders, the better. So thanks for tuning in, guys. David, I appreciate you, and we'll catch you on the next one. I appreciate you. <laughs>